song, and when we started singing, Paul looked up over to me and he said, Dolores Berry. She's passed on now. And Dolores, if you're listening today, we miss you, we love you, and we'll see you soon. I love Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday. Um, he's one of my heroes. And I believe that the words that he um, spoke to us and continues to speak to us were put in his mouth by God. I, just the way he eloqu eloquently spoke and shared the things and shared his sufferings. So scholars believe that the song that we heard today writes of a past experience, not with something merely challenging, but of something that was truly awful to endure, something that made life seem unlivable, a future impossible, or like death would inevitably be near, maybe like a war, <clears throat> or maybe like the Israelites in exile, maybe the struggles of a family without access to enough food or needed medical care, or a basic sense of safety. Whatever the situation was, it was a tough one. And the writer of the song likens it to being stuck in a pit of despair, or trudging through a miry bog, where even lifting a foot from the thick mud, taking things one step at a time, feels exhausting. You ever gone through thick mud? And you, I'm sure if you were in the military, I think they like to run you off through the mud or something. I've heard stories of that. But they like to put you through the mud. And, um, and you can't get your foot one to the next. Now the writer of this song begins with, I waited and I waited and I waited. When we are in one of those difficult situations, it seems that it takes forever to get through to the other side, especially when we are waiting on God to respond. And so the writer of the song tells the story of what happened when they waited on God instead of prematurely acting or trying to control a situation beyond control. This writer just trusted that God would come through, despite the evidence otherwise. They didn't turn to the crowd or go astray after false gods. And as they write, it served them very well, because eventually there was a way for this person to get out of the pit, where they were finally set upon firm ground where steps are light and easy to take. And despite all the days of wondering if it was ever possible, life has finally returned to this person. We are left wondering kind of what a, how the story might have gone had the writer not waited on God, but instead turned to the crowd of the false gods. Would he have found himself stuck in despair longer? Probably. Would his actions only have made things worse? Probably. Would they even be alive to tell the story? Who knows? But we know that they waited patiently on God and they were lifted up out of the mud pit and set on firm ground. Now, the psalm writers gift us with a testimony and hopes that we too will hear this story, and in hearing it, we will believe and trust in God. If love is not yet here, it is worth waiting on instead of turning towards vengeance or submission to evil. If justice has not yet come, it is worth waiting on instead of betraying one's integrity. If compassion is not yet present, it is worth waiting on rather than denying the ache of the world. If ways out of our pits of despair or destruction are anything but of God's way, we will do well just to keep waiting patiently because God will respond. Whenever we find ourselves in a difficult situation, we learn what it means to wait on God patiently as we trust, hope, and believe that God is with us. And God can certainly hold all of our feelings of impatience. God can even bear us shaking our fist at them in frustration or anger. God can hold all of our doubts and questions. But the writer assures us that having known how hard it is to wait, how happy are those who trust in God. God moves in the life outside of this writer, and throughout the Bible we read stories of people that have overcome difficult situations. And God continues to work in our world and in our lives, and each of us in this room has a story or two about God has lifted you up out of the mud at some point. And if you haven't been out in the mud at any point in your life, come see me, please. Because I know each one of us at some point in our life have been in the mud pit. Now one significant way that God is revealed in the world is through the testimony of humans. When we share our stories, God is revealed to others. Through stories of overcoming struggles, of hearts and minds that have been transformed, 
or of encountering the holy in the flesh of another person, this is how we come to recognize what God is still doing in our world. By sharing our experiences and reflecting them back to others, by telling our stories, by passing down truths from generation to generation that help open us to new expression of God's in a current form, we create possibilities for transformation. Martin Luther King is still influencing people, still transforming lives. Certainly if you're in the mud pit and you read some of his writings, you will be lifted up. The power of sharing our experience of God's saving grace as we experience it as individuals and collectively as a community has been shaping the world for ages. So on this Martin Luther King Sunday, we remember and honor a man who knew all too well times of suffering times of difficulty, times of uncertainty. They were times that King feared for his life and the lives of his family and the lives of his followers. So I want to share with you another one of his readings because I think he can say it much better than I can. So I get very emotional when I read this, so just bear with me. I got out of bed and I began to walk the floor. I had heard these things before, but for some reason that night it got to me. I turned over and tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't sleep. I was frustrated, bewildered, and then I got up. Finally, I went to the kitchen and heated a pot of coffee. I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. I sat there and thought about a beautiful little daughter who had just been born. I'd come in night after night and see that little gentle smile. I started thinking about a dedicated and loyal wife who was over there asleep. And she could be taken from me, or I could be taken from her. And I got the point that I couldn't take it any longer. I was weak. Something said to me, well, you can't call on Daddy now. You can't even call on your Mama. You've got to call on that something and that person that your Daddy used to tell you all about, that power that can make a way out of no way. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table, and I prayed aloud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still vivid in my memory. Lord, I'm down here trying to do what's right. I think I'm right. I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right. But Lord, I must confess that I am weak right now. I'm faltering. I'm losing my courage. Now I'm afraid. And I can't let the people see me like this. Because if they see me like this, they're going to get scared. Because they're looking for me for courage and leadership. They will become weak. If I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. Have you ever been in this place? It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, Martin Luther? Stand up for righteousness, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and lo, I will be with you, even until the end of the world. I tell you, I've seen the lightning flash, I've heard the thunder roar, but I heard the voice of Jesus saying, still, to fight on. He promised never to leave me alone, and that at that moment I experienced the presence of the divine, as I had never experienced it before. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. You've been there before. God, I don't think I can go on much longer with this. It hurts so bad. God, I'm afraid of what's gonna happen next. I'm fearful for my loved one. God, it seems insurmountable. When we're in the mud pit, we just need to reach out and call on God, and God will answer us. Maybe not right away, 
I'm sure this wasn't the first time that Martin Luther King cried out to God, and it wouldn't be the last. May we take the words of this strong leader, of this prophet of God, and may we gain comfort from them today as we go forth. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, there are times when we find our own selves in pits of despair and faith is a struggle. We wonder what's possible at all and we fear our hopes will be dashed. But you, O God, are always patient with us. You meet us tenderly in all the parts of us that are not yet ready to trust in the promises of love that you've given to us. Help us to believe, to trust, and to know, O oh God, that Jesus walks beside us in our times of trouble and our <coughs> times of turmoil. Indeed, he even carries us at times when we're too weak to go on. Whatever distresses we are going through at this time, I pray, O oh God, that you will give us some answers and lift them gently from our hearts so that we can go about doing the business of the church, which is being the light of Christ in our world, sharing your love, O oh God. And there's such a need for that. So strengthen us, O oh God, and let us put our face forward towards the cross and know that we can do all things through you, O oh God. And in your many names we pray. Amen. God bless you. Mm -hmm.